This LOS is calculate and interpret the mean, variance, and covariance or correlation of asset returns based on historical data. Variance and covariance of returns. Variance or risk is a measure of the volatility or the dispersion of returns. Variance is measured as the average squared deviation from the mean. Higher variance suggests less predictable returns and therefore a more risky investment. So on the left hand side we have the calculation for variance of a population and the right hand side we have the calculation for the variance of a sample. And the standard deviation we know is the square root of the variance. Variance and covariance of returns. So we're starting with the formula for the covariance between two assets, x and y, and it's the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by n minus one. And it's easy to understand this formula. Just think of the formula for variance as the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus one. If you expand that numerator to x minus x bar times x minus x bar, you can see that for covariance, we're just changing the second x minus x bar to y minus y bar. Now we're moving on from covariance to correlations of returns. And for correlation, it's covariance divided by the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y. So on the left hand side, I've shown it as COR. On the right hand side is a big R. That's just showing you that in different texts, different readings, you see different nomenclature. It's just the same formula. Don't be confused by it. And now that we've got uh, correlation equals covariance divided by standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y, we can also calculate covariance then as standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y times the correlation by just rearranging the algebra. So here's just an example which runs us through all the calculations from variance to standard deviation to covariance and uh, correlation, okay? So this is an old example that used to be in the CFA text, and it was to calculate actually the beta between GE and the S&P 500. And the formula for beta, which we'll see later on, is covariance divided by the variance of the market, all right? Uh, but this is just a nice little exercise that takes us through all the math. So the first thing that we have, this was from the time period of December 2003 to December 2004. So we had um, 13 months, but we had 12 returns, okay? Uh, so we have the closing price for GE each month, and there was no dividends paid during this time. So to calculate the return, the monthly return is easy. It's ending minus beginning divided by beginning. So 33.63 minus 30.98 divided by 30.98, for example, the first monthly return was 8.55%. So we can calculate all the monthly returns, and if we divide by N, we'll have our average return, which was 1.45. So then we take our return minus our average return, so we can see 8.55 minus 1.45, uh, we get 7.11, we get our X minus X bar. X bar is our average return. And then we square it, return minus expected return, or uh, squared. And if we sum that all up and divide by n minus one, that's how we have our variance. The variance is the sum of x minus x bar divided by n minus one. We get a variance of 15.75, but that doesn't tell us a lot. We take the square root of the uh, variance, we get the standard deviation of 3.97, and that's back into percentages. We are looking at monthly returns in terms of percentages, the standard deviation is in the same measurement form, 3.97, okay? So we can do that uh, for the S&P 500 as well, for we have the closing prices for that time period, and so we can calculate the rate of return, we can calculate the average rate of return, and then similarly, which we're gonna use as Y then, because now we're looking at the stock as X, and the S&P 500 as Y. So we can calculate the average return for that time period, 0.74, y minus y bar in this column, y minus y bar squared. We can get the variance of the uh, uh, S&P 500, similarly the standard deviation. So remember, for our covariance, we we're looking at the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar. So I put x minus x bar as column uh, one, which I, I highlight in pink, y minus y bar is column two, 
So in this here, it was 1 times 2, which is x minus x bar times y minus y bar. Sum them all up, divided by n minus 1, and we get the covariance of 3.9, okay? And so then to calculate a beta, which we'll see later on in, uh, uh, in a later LOS, it's just the covariance between the stock and the market divided by the variance of the market. So 3.9 divided by 4.38, we have a beta of 0 0.89. So I just opened up the Excel file that I often use this in uh, my teaching classes. So just to finish this off, uh, we can also calculate the correlation, which is the covariance between the stock and the market divided by the standard deviation of GE times the standard deviation of the market. So just using the audit toolbar, you can see uh, cov uh, covariance. 3.9 divided by 3.97 standard deviation on GE times 2.09 the standard deviation on the market and we had a correlation of 0 0.47. So again we could also calculate covariance then as the correlation times the standard deviation of GE times the standard deviation of the market which is our 0 0.47 times 3.97 times uh, 2.09 and we get the covariance of 3.9, which was, again, the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by n minus 1. Or uh, once we know the calculation for uh, correlation is covariance divided by standard deviation times standard deviation, then covariance is also correlation times standard deviation times standard deviation. So classic CFA is, um, you know, three variables given to calculate the third or for variables given three, calculate the fourth. So again, just a nice little review on the steps to calculate the variance from that last example we saw. Step number one, calculator use the return given for each period, sum up the returns, calculate the average return, subtract the average return from each period return, square the result, add the sum of the squares, divide by the number of periods minus one for the sample, this gives us the variance, and take the square root of the variance and you have the standard deviation. So let's just do a quick little practice question to consolidate our understanding. This is typical of something you'd see on the CFA level one exam. An analyst observes the following return behavior between stocks X and Y. Time periods one, two, three, four. X returns is seven, nine, 10, and 10. Y's return is five, eight, 11, and eight. What is the covariance of returns between stocks X and Y? Is it A plus three, B plus 1.5, or C minus three? So the correct answer for this is A, which is plus three. So you can see you have to uh, calculate quite a few little calculations to do this in 90 seconds, but it's fairly easy and straightforward. So again, the covariance is the sum of the return minus uh, X minus X bar times Y minus Y bar divided by N minus one. So first of all, you have to calculate the X bar and the Y bar, which is the average for X and Y. The average for X was nine. The average for Y was eight. And then you had to do uh, X minus X bar times Y minus Y bar. The sum of that divided by N minus one, which in this case was uh, four minus one, so it's three. And once you've worked out the math, it's gonna equal three. So speed is a skill, skill gets rewarded. How do we increase our speed in any endeavor, whether it's sports or in this case, uh, calculator skill, we practice. So here's another question, which is almost exactly the same, just to practice again. An analyst has gathered monthly returns for two stock indexes, A and B. So there's four months of return. The returns for index A, negative 6.4% uh, month one, 6.6% month two, 12.9% month three, and 3.2% in month four. For index B, negative 6.2% month one, 19% month two, negative 7.7% for month three, and 4% for month four. The covariance between index A and index B is closest to A, 10.37, B, 13.82, or C, 19.64. So this is just nice little practice again, uh, how to crank out the uh, calculation for the covariance. So step number one, we need to cap, uh, compute the average for each index. So for index A, it's the sum of the numbers divided by the count. We can see it's 4.08. And for index B, it's 2.28. Then we're gonna calculate the sum of X minus X bar times Y minus Y bar 
um, for, for all four months, and that's going to give us 41.47. And finally, we're going to divide that by n minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, uh, which is 3. So 41.47 divided by 3, we're going to get 13.82. So the correct answer is B, 13.82. So another practice question now, just to help uh, check our understanding. A bond analyst is looking at historical returns for two bonds, bond one and bond two. Bond two's returns are much more volatile than bond one. The variance for bond one is 0 0.012, and the variance of returns of bond two is 0 0.308. The correlation between the returns of the two bonds is 0 0.79, and the covariance is 0 0.048. If the variance of bond 1 increases to 0.026, while the variance of bond B decreases to 0.188, and the covariance remains the same, the correlation between the two bonds will A, remain the same, B, increase, or C, decrease. This is a very good practice question because you need to read it very carefully, and there's a lot of extra information that you don't really need. So first of all, you do need to know the formula for correlation, which is the covariance divided by the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of, not, of y. So you can see, reading the uh, question very carefully, it says the covariance remains the same. And they gave us the covariance here of 0 0.048. So we know the numerator is 0 0.048, but we don't know the denominator which is the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y. What have, they, what have they given us? The variance for bond 1 is increasing to 0.026, and the variance of bond b will decrease to 0.188. So we have to know that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So we need to do the square root of 0.026 and 0.188. And when we do that, we get 0.161245 and 0.43359, okay? So then the calculation becomes very easy. It's covariance, which remain the same, 0.048 times the standard deviation of the, of the first bond, 0.161245 times the standard deviation of the second, 0.43359, and we're going to get 0. Point, we can round it, 69 which is lower than the original 0.79. So the correct answer is C. The correct answer is C. So you can see reading through this, we didn't need this number, the, vari the original variance. We didn't need the original variance. We did need the 0 0.79 to compare it. So a nice little practice problem, lots of information. You need to be able to know what to do fairly quickly and decipher through the question what you need and what you do not need. Another practice question to consolidate our understanding. If the standard deviation of stock A is 10.6% and the standard deviation of stock B is 14.6% and the covariance between the two is 0 0.015476, what is the correlation coefficient? A, 0 0.0002, B, 0, or C, plus 1? So this question was fairly easy. They're just asking for the correlation coefficient, which is covariance divided by the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B. Now the only thing in this one is they gave you the covariance as a, as a, as a decimal and the standard deviation in percentages. You know you just need to convert the percentages to decimals and it's 0 0.015476 divided by 0 0.106 times 0.146 and that gave us the correct answer of C, the correlation coefficient is plus one. So quite an easy question. Another quick little practice problem. An analyst gathered the following information about two common stocks. The variance of returns for the Libby Company, 15.5. The variance of returns for Metromedia, 22.3. The covariance is 8.65. The correlation coefficient between the two common stocks on the returns is closest to A, 0 0.025, B, 0 0.388, or C, 0 0.465.
So again, just another quick practice that uh, correlation is covariance divided by standard deviation times standard deviation. And here they gave you the variance of returns. So you have to remember to calculate the uh, st uh, standard deviation, which is just the square root of the variance, okay? So the standard deviation of Livy is 3.937 and standard deviation of Metromedia 4.722. So they gave you the covariance. So it's 8.65 divided by 3.5. 937 times 4.722, and you get the correct answer of C. The correlation coefficient is closest to C, 0 0.465. And that, again, another easy one once you start uh, practicing these. So we're just gonna finish this LOS with one last practice question. And I like this one because it's typical of something that you can see on the CFA exam where you really have to do a number of subcalculations it's sort of like three questions in one. So let's go through it. Greg Goebel and Mason Erickson are studying for the CFA level one exam. They've just started the section on portfolio management and Erickson is having difficult with the equations for the covariance and the correlation coefficient for two stock portfolios. Goebel is confident with the material and creates the following quiz for Erickson. Using the information in the table below, he asked Erickson to fill in the question marks. So you can see we've got portfolio J, Portfolio K and Portfolio L. They, uh, all portfolios have two stocks. Uh, for Portfolio J, the question mark is under covariance. They have a correlation coefficient of 0 0.75, standard deviation of 0 0.08 on stock one, and standard deviation of 0.18 on stock two. For Portfolio K, we have the covariance given, but we don't know the correlation coefficient, and we have the standard deviation stock one 0 0.2 and stock two 0 0.12. For portfolio L, they're also giving us the covariance 0 0.003. The question mark is on the correlation coefficient and you can see they're giving us the standard deviations. Which of the following choices correctly gives the covariance for portfolio J and the correlation coefficients for K and L? So you can see you need to do three calculations fairly quickly in your 90 seconds. Okay, a nice little question to end off this LOS with some practice on calculation, uh, calculating the correlation coefficient and uh, covariance, okay? So the first unknown was the covariance of portfolio J. How do we calculate covariance? It's standard deviation of X times standard deviation of Y times the correlation coefficient. And they've given you all that. So it's simply 0 0.75 times 0 0.08 times 0.18 and we get 0 0.0108, or it's closest to, you have to just be careful, it's closest to 0 0.011. So we know immediately now that B is wrong, it can't be right, because uh, our covariance of portfolio J is closest to 0 0.011, so it has to be now either A or C. So we'll move on to the next question mark, which what was the correlation coefficient for portfolio K? And here again is our calculation, the formula for correlation. It's covariance divided by standard deviation times standard deviation. So they've given us the covariance and here's the standard deviation, standard deviation. So there's the numerator and there's the two numbers you need for the denominator. So it becomes quite easy, 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.2 times 0 0.12, we get 0 0.833. So there's the correct answer. So we know it has to be C, A cannot be right. So we don't even have to do the third calculation. Uh, the correct answer is C. So nice little uh, f uh, question to end this LOS. That's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you very much.